All right. Ricardo, where are you? How do you find a y-intercept? Ricardo. Huh? Look back at your notes. Look back, look back. X equals zero. Raise your hand if you knew that. Okay. Everyone say original. original. Let's write the original. We're going to make X equals zero. Each of zero equals the square root of four times zero plus one. Four times zero? Zero plus one. Square root of one. The square root, two numbers that uh, multiply to equal one. It's one. So h of zero equals one, which is the order pair what? Zero comma one, right? This is your x value, x value, and essentially all this means your y, so y equals one. Raise your hand if you got that. Okay. Um, Sebastian, where are you? How do you find a x-intercept? Let's make y equals zero. Class, put your finger on the variable y. It's right there, right? So. Write the original, y equals square root of 4x plus 1. He just told us to make y equal to 0. 0 equals square root of 4x plus 1. Okay, how do we solve for x? Huh? How do you, what's the opposite of a square root? Square root. Power of 2. Here's a hint. There's a number here. They call it the index. Does anyone know what number that is? It's a 2. Right? If you don't see it in math, like there's some numbers that are not there, right? And you have to imply what numbers they are. That is a 2. So what happens here is if I square this right side, I have to square the left side, right? So now I'm left with 0 squared, so 0 times 0 is 0. And what happens here is, uh, in some ways, these are like canceling the square root and the index with this one. And you're just left with what's inside, which is 4x plus 1. We're almost there. How do you solve for x? Subtract 1. And then divide by 4 x is equal to, and my order pair, there it is, who got that, no one got that, you gotta make your ready, so when you guys do surgeries, you're all on your own, Mr. Ring can't stand there, okay, this is new. Let's create a table of values. This is your x. Simple, this side is called the y, or what? This side's the x, the y. Another way of saying y is h of x. OK, so we have 0, 1. I have negative one fourth zero. Okay. If I start plugging in numbers for x, one, two, three, four. Someone pick a number. Ten. Four times ten is forty plus one is is square root of forty one a perfect square? No. Anyone got the number? It's 
tell you how I did it. Go into uh, graph it, y equals. Put it in there with you. So the square root button is down here with x squared. It's in blue, so I'm going to have to press second, x squared. Those are the buttons I pressed. And then now we can type in 4x plus 1, 4x plus 1. Class, what is this called? Table of values. Table of values. So, so before I go to the table, I'm going to do table set. So you can press second window. What do you press, class? Second window. Doesn't matter where your table is starting. I would say something close to zero. Mine's on 12. It's fine. I do want the tables to move by ones on the x values. Does that make sense? And then independent is your x values. So I want the calculator to already make up x values. And I want the calculator to automatically figure out y values. Does that make sense? So I go to table. How do I get there? Uh, we don't like decimals, do we? So what are some nice round numbers? Oh. Look at that. 12. 4 times 12 is? 48 plus 1 is? And square root of 49 is? I like that one. 12, 7. Do you see that? Makes it nice and clean. Don't sit there and use all the numbers. 1, 2, no. It's a bunch of decimals. We don't want that. It's not clean. Oh, there's a better one. Raise your hand if you thought of 6. 4 times 6 is? And 24 plus 1 is? Oh, I like that. Super helpful. Okay, let's graph it. Even better. Totally missed it. 2. 2 times 4? 8 plus 1 is? Square root of 9? Okay. Think in your head. Where is this really going to be in the graph? Review your quadrants. Which quadrant class? More in quadrants one and two. Yes? Why did I do that? So I wouldn't have just drawn a graph that looks like this. You want to kind of like think and zoom in to the area. That way you give yourself plenty of space. So if I were doing the problem, Do you see how my graph's not centered? It's not like this. All right, let's graph it. Zero, one. Negative four, negative one fourth, zero. That's between what two numbers class? Don't say between one and four. Between what two numbers? Zero and one. What's one fourth of a dollar? Point twenty five. So this is between 0 and 1, but closer to what number? 0. Something like right there. And then we have 2, 5. Right 2, up 5. And if you wanted to, 6, 5. 2, four. 2, 3. Thank you. Can't read. And then six, five, two, four, six, and then five. So my graph looks something like this. Think about it. What would happen if I picked negative one? Negative 1 times 4. Negative 4 plus 1. Square root of negative 3. 3i. Pay attention. The reason why there is no graph to the left is because you'll get an imaginary. Yes? They call that the complex number system. It's different than this because this line represents the what? 
x, and this one represents the y. y. The x and the y are on the real number system. Real. This is what this is. We don't have the complex, that's why the graph stops, and this is why it's called a square root function. You're not going this direction. Can you think of a number, whatever numbers you put in here, and you take the square root, can it ever be a negative number? Like square root of 50, square root of 2,000, square root of 4? Is it ever negative? No, that's why there's no numbers in quadrants 3 and 4. That's how you graph down by hand. And you can also just put in your calculator, y equals graph. There it is. Okay?